Hello guys, today we are talking about the DJI Fly update. A new version 1.6.5 is now available. This is testing on iOS. And what does this do? Well, this says it, it fixes certain issues and optimizes app quality. Testing this on the DJI Mini 3 Pro. Now, first of all, all you know I have the RC version of this. And if you have this as well, you will see that the current version on your controller is 1.6.1. .1. I can't find any way personally to update this to this 1.6.5 when you go to check firmware updates you don't get anything there's no prompts on the home screen and i've even downloaded the apk off the dji download sensor try to install this various ways and it doesn't work so for the time being for this testing i'm not going to be using the rc that's in the bag and i'm going old school getting out the old controller and then connect it to my phone so if you're going to be doing this as well and you want to go and test this out or try it out make sure you pay your DJI Mini 3 Pro just by holding that button at the top and then we're going to see here now that on this you can see 1.6.5 however in this first location the wind is awful today 38 miles per hour gusts so it's not good here so I'm going to go and change location Okay, let's get straight into the video. So let's take off and we'll talk about this new update. And you can see just in the distance there, look at all those seagulls. So I don't want to be heading over there just yet, especially in these winds. Winds and seagulls is probably not going to be a good combination. So just testing the zoom here. On these tests, I go through all the features and I check the performance of it and how the overall app works to see if you should go out and download this straight away or just hold fire. So if you do get value from these, please let me know in the comments down below if you want me to still continue doing these update videos so i'm just going to fly now over to this wind turbine we're going to check out some of the res and fps so first of all let's move over now and change it from a normal frame rate to a filming at 25 fps and we'll move up to 4k 60. so this is a new feature on the mini 3 pro it allows you to slow your footage down but still allowing you to film at 4k so it's fantastic this and i use this a lot when doing any slow-mo and i only use it for slow-mo footage after a film doing sequences like this i'll switch it back to 4k 25 or 30 so i won't advise shooting in that all the time also just to know when you're in 4k 30 and below you have this zoom option on screen here but when you move up to the higher frame rate so anything over 48 fps 50 and 60 that button now disappears and you can't zoom in in the higher frame rates i'm not uh, completely sure why because it's just a digital zoom but you can't nevertheless in 2.7k you can zoom up to three times and in 4k up to two times switching over now to the pro mode because i don't have any nd filters i'm going to crank that shutter speed up and then in the color options you've got normal or d cine like so d cine like is the highest quality 10 bits is what i film in a lot if you don't like color grading or don't know how to just stick it into normal normal comes out really well but for d cine like it gives you a lot more options in the color grading and then the vertical video, fantastic addition on this drone that I've been using a lot, especially for Instagram Reels. So just by hitting that button there, you can change it from horizontal to vertical video. And then you get all that quality, you don't have to crop in. So that's brilliant and it works great on here. On the main screen, you'll see here that everything now is in a bolder font. Again, the buttons for the vertical video, one times and AF are bigger buttons now. They stand out more, so they're easier to press. So everything on the screen is nice and snappy and responsive. The compass works well. Everything is going great. However, I have found a few bugs on this as well, which I'll talk about at the end of the video. But overall, from the actual responsiveness of the, the buttons when you press them, the, any lag, nothing it's working really well i want to just go through the settings i'm going to fly through these just to see anything is normal and just to make sure you are aware of some of these settings so your obstacle avoidance make sure that's on bypass all the time unless you're flying through something then turn them off you want to have sideways flights i would say off for the best experience Make sure your altitude is set accordingly. Compass, IMU, you don't really need to calibrate these unless it asks you. Advanced safety settings, I would keep this on return to home all the time and make sure that is set on return to home just in case you lose signal. In control, this is where you can change the units. I'd keep subject scanning off. And then what else? Gimbal calibration. If your gimbal calibration, if that horizontal line is off, this is where you can do a manual one. That looks perfect. If it's not, just adjust that just by pressing plus or minus. Let's get back into them settings. Right, phone charging. Because I've got it connected to my iPhone, I can use iPhone phone charging that will charge my iPhone. 
And then the customization buttons, I have this one set, which is the portrait landscape mode switch. So by pressing the FN button, you will switch from uh, horizontal to vertical and everything else on here is exactly the same. Camera, you can choose normal or D cine like I have it normally in D cine like and then the encoding format, if your computer can handle it, H.265 is what I use. And then everything else, identical. Make sure grid lines, I do advise this all the time. You have your rule of thirds one on as a minimum. That will help so much with framing your videos. And auto white balance, you can have it auto or manual. Transmission, keep it on dual band, it works fine. And now let's look at some of the features. One of the features I love on this new drone is the camera. I think the photos coming out of here are excellent. And I'm gonna give you a sneak preview now into my latest product, which is gonna be some Lightroom presets. So that is a JPEG image there, but by shooting in RAW, this is gonna allow you to edit your photos so much better. So this is gonna be a 12 pack. It's gonna be 12 presets that work for the Mini 3 Pro and any other camera. And it allows you to literally just slide over selecting any of these presets to completely change the look of your photo. So you can do this on the desktop app, or it's gonna be available on the mobile free version as well look at this picture here i took on the mini 3 pro in 48 megapixel it's a nice photo isn't it but by selecting one of these presets look at what happens to it look at the difference by one click this beach shot here if we look at the original shot this is the original straight out of the drone now edits one click it changes it to that from this to that i've worked on these for over a year and i cannot wait to share them with you so let's get back to the video now so as we know that, that the photos are working great on here all of the settings master shots quick shots hyperlapse nothing has changed at all so everything else is exactly the same as what it was on the previous version nothing's different everything's working fine i'm not going to go through all them today just because it's exactly the same as it has been before I will be doing a video soon on the hyperlapse function and the master shots on here. I'm not showing you those just yet, but it's great that literally you've got all these features on here and it's, it's literally like mini Air 2S. And you could say some features that are actually better than the Air 2S. So are going to be a comparison video coming soon on them. So before you go out and rush to update this to this latest flight update, should you? Well, I would say not because I was having a few bugs on this app as well. The features wise on here worked brilliantly. Everything has worked spot on regards to the features. However, I was getting some weird messages like return because of a low battery at 52%, which makes no sense. This happened quite a few times, it's popped up. Again, you can see here, 45% return and it's on battery level low. That doesn't make any sense whatsoever. And then most annoyingly is that, look here, as I was actually panning around, and I hope I don't make you dizzy, look at the lag. So as I'm rotating around, this is now going to be the lag that I saw on my screen. It was screen recording, but I've never had this before. And you can see the lag. Now, when you watch it back through the memory card, there is no lag. It's perfect, just like this. However, if you're going to be trying to do intricate shots cinematic shots and you see the lag here just look at the wind turbine look how it's stuttering that isn't ideal at all so my advice would be don't update it there's no need really it doesn't bring anything at all new all it does is I've experienced some lag which wouldn't be good enough I've not been able to test this on the DJI RC which is probably a good thing um, just keep on the version that you've already got I would skip this and just wait for the next one that lag alone is a is a big enough reason not to it will ruin any type of cinematic shots so everything else has worked spot on with this hasn't affected any of the performance or the features but the actual lag is an issue so i'd skip it it doesn't bring anything at all but let me know in the comments down below if you've already updated have you had any of these kind of issues or bugs let me know and please do let me know if you do want me to continue doing any of these update videos i'll be really interested to hear from you guys anyway have a fantastic day and i'll see you all soon